Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and I haven't done an update on my network lately here at the house because I haven't had to do much with it. It's been working pretty well. But the other day I wanted to upgrade one of my Wi-Fi access points in the house to the Wi-Fi 6E standard. And I went out and picked up this one. This is a Unify U6 Enterprise, and this supports 6E, including the 6 gigahertz band. And I got it working, and I've been playing around with it. I ran some benchmarks on it, and I thought what I would do in this video is an overview of this and what you can expect out of it if you do integrate one into your network. And if you haven't seen my other videos on my Unify equipment, definitely check out the playlist in the video description so you can get a feel for how everything is set up here in the house and how this plugs into it. In this video, we're gonna be primarily focused on the access point itself. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. However, the router and network controller that we'll be looking at to configure the access point was provided by Unify free of charge a couple of years back. So let's get into it now and see what this new access point is all about. Now the price point on this is $279. This is definitely a more robust access point than the lower cost light models. As you can see, the light here is much smaller physically and also a lot lighter. This thing weighs two pounds, 2.7 ounces or 540 grams. So this is not something that's going to hang, I think, from a drop ceiling tile. You'll probably need some beefier infrastructure on the ceiling if you are hanging it up that way. But they do provide a lot of mounting hardware in the box here. So you have a little template here with a leveler on it so you can get everything straight. Uh, you could mount it to a drop ceiling, not off the tiles, but using the frames of the tiles to get everything centered there. So there's a lot of different mounting options. There's a pretty good instruction guide on the website for getting it all figured out. So I think you should have everything in the box to get this thing mounted. However, what's not in the box is a power adapter because the only way you can power these devices is over the ethernet cable that connects it to the network. This certainly makes it easier to get it set up because you don't have to run high voltage wire along with the networking cable, but you're going to need a power source. Now, the trick with this one is that it can achieve speeds that are north of one gigabit. So you want to plug it into a multi gigabit switch for the best performance. And unfortunately at the moment right now, uh, Unify doesn't provide, I think, an affordable way to do that just yet. So this supports the two and a half gigabit standard here on the back. And unfortunately at the moment, I can't find an affordable switch from Unify that delivers two and a half gig ethernet and the PoE power to the access point here. So what I ended up doing was picking up a third party injector, this one from a company called Ingenious. And I've been buying their stuff for probably almost 20 years at this point and have had generally good luck with them. This injector supports two and a half gigabit ethernet and the PoE plus standard, also known as 802.3 AT. And this has been working fine here on my network. So you plug your uh, LAN into here, and then you run this port out to the access point, and this has been able to provide sufficient bandwidth and sufficient power to the access point. It does get pretty hot, by the way, so just be aware of that, but it hasn't overheated. I've been letting it run uh, overnight now, and all has been good so far, but it's definitely running on the warm side, but it's delivering pretty good performance as you'll see in a few minutes here. So why would you look at getting this big one here for more money versus the smaller light model? Well, I think for most people, the light model is probably going to be just fine. But if you want the maximum bandwidth and you want to take advantage of the six gigahertz band that the Wi-Fi 6E standard supports, that's a reason to look at this. This will also support more clients. So on this one, you can get 600 plus people connected to it versus about 300 on the smaller model. That's certainly not a problem in my house, but I'm sure there are places where you have that level of activity and want to support all of those users. The big deal with six gigahertz is that there is no other Wi-Fi standard operating on that frequency right now. So you're gonna have less interference and you're likely going to have much wider bandwidth as a result of that lack of interference. So this one uh, will do, I believe, seven channels at 160 megahertz each, and that'll get you north of a gigabit if you've got the right conditions going on. And then if you were operating at 80 megahertz, you can get 14 channels on this without any 
overlap, which is pretty significant. On five gigahertz, of course, we've got the AC standard, we've got Wi-Fi 6, we have wireless N, there's a lot of different ways in which people access that part of the spectrum. Here, six gigahertz at the moment at least is carved out for 6E only, and provided your clients support 6E, you're gonna have a lot of bandwidth available to you. But if you have clients that support a 160 megahertz wide channel on five gigahertz and you have little interference, you're gonna have very similar performance on the five gigahertz band as you will on the six gigahertz. And of course, with this having a two and a half gigabit port on the back, your backhaul is now more than twice as fast. So if you have users across multiple frequency bands, driving a lot of bandwidth, you should be able to support more users off a single unit than you could on one with only a one gigabit backhaul. Additionally, they say that the uh, 2.4 gigahertz performance here will max out at around 570 megabits per second versus 300 on the light model. So all in, uh, much faster, can support more users, and of course has more frequency bands available to spread those users out across multiple frequencies without interference. So now what I want to do is get this thing hooked up and I'll show you how I have everything configured and then we'll take a look at some benchmarks I ran on it earlier. So let's take a look and see how we have this thing set up. As you can see right now it is in the place where I am going to be operating with it and for clients I do have a 6E compatible device connected at the moment which is my Pixel 6A phone and as you can see here it is connecting on the six gigahertz band here. Now, as far as its configuration is concerned, this is what I have configured on it at the moment. I've really been focused in on that six gigahertz band because that's where I can really extract the most performance out of it in the house here. You'll notice though that I did turn off the global access point settings so I can set everything for this particular device manually. So here's my 2.4 gigahertz radio here. I suppose I could increase the channel width on that one a little bit if I wanted to. I'm leaving the 5 gigahertz radio at 80 at the moment, and the reason is is that I have other access points in the house also running at 80, and I don't have any 5 gigahertz equipment that can really take advantage of that wide of a channel, and the equipment that I do have that can take advantage of 160 megahertz channels also has 6E support, so I'm just going to, again, focus on 6 gigahertz for that. So you can see my 6 gigahertz radio here is set to 160, and I have the channel here at 85, which I found in my house at least to deliver the best performance at the moment. But I am leaving transmit power on auto, but I might experiment with that a little bit in the future. Now, like other Unify access points, you do get some data about what's going on in the RF environment. So if we take a look here on my Insights tab, you'll see that right now my uh, 2.4 gigahertz channel is a little busy, so I may adjust that one a little bit to get something a little less busy. But as you can see here, the five gigahertz is pretty clear, as is the six gigahertz, which is completely clear at the moment, just because I'm not using much uh, with it right now. The only thing you don't get though, is a six gigahertz environment checker here. So for example, on 2.4 and five, I can have it scan the channels to see what else might be occupying a particular frequency to best pick the channels that work best in my environment. And we just don't have the option right now for the six gigahertz channel to be investigated in that manner. Although I suspect this might be something that would come in a future firmware update perhaps for my controller. So let's take a look now at some benchmarks and we'll begin with the best case scenario where you've got the access point mounted somewhere in the same room as the computers that are connecting to it. And our test machine for this experiment is this Lenovo ThinkPad Z16 that I'll be reviewing on the channel in the near future. This has a 6E radio on board. And I wanna start with a speedtest.net app test. And I wanted to do this first because I wanted to show how it ramps up the bandwidth here. You can see, unlike ethernet, you don't get a full blast right away. It kind of inches its way up the ladder here to give you the maximum bandwidth that the connection can support. And here, as you can see, on my six gigabit connection here at the house, I'm pulling down 1.5 gigabits off the Wi-Fi, six gigahertz, 160 megahertz wide, and I'm able to send upstream about the same amount of data, which is pretty nice here. Now, if you're gonna run an iPerf test, I would suggest using their parallel test feature, which you can enable with the dash P flag on the command line when you set it up. 
but there you can see we got 1.5 gigabits of bandwidth between the Lenovo computer here on the desk and my Mac on the other side of the room that was connected with a 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter. So the performance here is very good and I think 1.5 gigabits is about the max you're going to get out of a single connection using that 6 gigahertz frequency and 160 megahertz of bandwidth. But that's pretty darn good, I think, for Wi-Fi. But again, that was in kind of a perfect condition here where we were about 10 or 11 feet away from the access point with a clear line of sight. So what I did is I put the access point in the spot where I'm going to keep it and put the laptop where I intend to use it most of the time. And on the Lenovo here, we had a very good result, even at a further distance. And if you look on the line there that says sum, we got about 759 megabits per second on that same iPerf test. And then on the internet speed test here, we were able to pull down about 850 megabits per second, give or take, and upload at about 670. And the laptop in this example was placed about 30 feet away in another room. There was a wall in between and some obstructions near the access point that I'm sure would foul things up. But still, it did pretty darn good even at a greater distance. And even down here in the basement, we're actually hanging on to the connection. So now the access point is about 60 feet away and we've got a floor and walls and all sorts of stuff in between here. And we're still hanging on with about 138 megabits per second. I'll run the internet speed test here again to see how that works. And again, we're connected at the six gigahertz uh, frequency here at 160 uh, megahertz wide. And we're actually pulling down about 230 megabits per second, fairly far away from the access point. And I think if you engineer this thing correctly, uh, you will be able to deliver significant bandwidth with enough units with good channel separation to be able to dramatically increase the Wi-Fi performance in your particular area. But the reality is that it's probably overkill for most homes unless you really need the maximum amount of Wi-Fi bandwidth you can muster out of something. And on my MacBook Air M2, which does support Wi-Fi 6, but only 5 gigahertz at 80 megahertz, I was getting about half a gigabit or so on the downstream in my kitchen location. Again, 30 feet in a wall in between it and the access point, and roughly that amount on the upstream. A little bit less, though, as you can see. And I had similar results on iPerf tests that I ran on that computer as well. But still, uh, very capable here for Wi-Fi. And although I have a 6 gigabit symmetrical connection here at the house, when I upload a video to YouTube, I'm roughly in the half a gigabit territory due to peering and other restrictions. So uh, I think I should be able to get pretty good performance in that kitchen location, even on devices that don't support the six gigahertz networking. Now I did also test the MacBook down here when we had the access point just a few feet away. And when I ran that test, I didn't really see any performance difference between the enterprise unit and my uh, six light unit that I usually use down here. So on older equipment, it's not gonna make much of a difference, but for the newer stuff that supports six gigahertz, I think you're gonna have a lot of options for dramatically improving your Wi-Fi performance, provided you set up enough of these devices and have them staggered in a way that you keep a pretty close proximity to them to really get above that gigabit barrier. But all in, it seems to work pretty nicely and you can get yourself pretty much at ethernet speeds, if not a little faster than gigabit ethernet over Wi-Fi, which I think is pretty amazing. So let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and we'll come back and look at this a little bit more in the future. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.